Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Good afternoon. Seems to me whenever I get up here, it's always afternoon. <laughs> I don't know why that is. Last week, the fellow was up here at 11:30. Anyways, it's all good. I think it's wonderful. I, I've never seen the house so packed as I saw last night. This looks empty today. It does. And I want to tell you guys, what a beautiful arrangement. Glorious. I mean, I could see the sky opening up. Like a sky we've never seen before. That was just precious, precious. All right, so I've entitled this little talk. Is it scary to let go? It's scary to let go. It's a question, you guys. Why don't you do it? Why don't we do it? You can't do it is with it, your own strength. Is it scary? In your human strength, yes. Are we still at James? Everybody's still there? Let's begin in verse 2. James 1 and 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Joy. Joy. Do we find joy in temptation? When we're beat up? When we're fighting things? The sins that so easily beset us? Do we find joy in allowing God to take care of things? Handing the reins over to Him. Or do we want to fight our own battles and choose to be upset over some little thing that we're focused on? And God thinks that we need that in our lives to help perfect our character. Mm -hmm. And we have this attitude like, oh, poor me. You know? Doesn't the Bible promise that we will not be giving more than we can handle? Do we believe God when he says that? Then there's a reason for it. There's a reason for the struggles that you have. There's a reason for the struggles that I have. And they're not all the same. You know? Two can't walk together lest they be agreed. You know, if you have a two-headed person, one wants to go this way, one wants to go that way, where's that body going to go? It's not going to move. Right? Um, my precious wife, I think she's awesome. I think she's um, much easier to lead than I am. But once in a while, she's got to kick me in the pants and say, hey, mister, where are you going? <laughs> you know? Um, Kyla does that daily to me. <laughs> so, um, but the Lord is gracious. I mean, uh, he put Kyla in my life to straighten me out. You know, she's hard at it every day. <laughs> Trust me. Trust me. But we, we need to think of it and count it all joy. Amen. It's opposite to our, our way of thinking. We see things and it's a problem. Oh, we get upset. We're focused on the problem or the, the, the neighbor next door. It's a problem. Thankfully, you guys got one. It's a good one. He solves problems. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But not all of us have that struggle. Some of us have neighbors that are just, my mother would say, rascals. That was the word she used to use. A little rascal. But evidently we need these things. And we should see them as not a big problem. We should see it as an opportunity. Right? What if we thought differently about it? Not seeing it as a problem. What, what's another word we could use for problem if we wanted to look at that in 180 degrees? Challenge. A challenge. A challenge. What if we met every problem with that understanding? That it's a challenge. God has sought to it fit that I need this in my life. Amen. Whatever it is, at this moment, you know, some days you drive and every light you hit is red. Yeah. Right? And some days, I mean, you just come, you just don't even hit the brake, the light turns green. Boom. 
I mean, it's just LA, right? And some days people are just really nice and friendly, and some days you just run into a lot of rascals. Maybe it's not them, maybe it's you. You know? Who knows? Amen. But we gotta be focused on the Lord. If we're focused on Him, everything falls into place. Just like it's supposed to be. We we do make things more difficult than they are. You know, it's human nature to uh, seek the wrong. It is. It's how we're twisted up. It's how we're made. But we have to die to self so that we can live to Jesus Christ. Amen. In Christ. See, because uh, then it becomes his problem and not my problem. Right? He's the answer. You know, I, I like to say that he's the question behind every answer. Number three, James 1 and 3. Knowing this, that trying the trying of your faith worketh what? Patience. How many of y'all got patience? I don't see hands flying all up. I think we all have patience, some of us more than others. It's another thing that we need to work on, right? Allow the Lord to have his way. Do you think Jesus was patient? Can you imagine what Jesus went through? Think about it. every single person you run into is a rascal. Because that's what Jesus had to deal with. You know? Think of it. Man is the only one that doesn't obey God. All of God's creation obeys Him. Amen. Obeys Him without, I mean, there's no hesitation. Period. But man... Kicking and screaming. And Jesus, the dissension, I can't even imagine. I, I, my mind just turns to smoke. I'm trying to figure out how he entered and became a man and dealt with us. That is, um, Amazing to me. Amen. And that he put on flesh for eternity. Amen. For eternity. He's given so much to us and we give so little. We really do. Because why? We are focused on problems and things that don't concern us. When Jesus was what? Always focused on the will of his Father, which in turn was saving us. Amen. Right? Amen. He's still in the business of saving us. Amen. Amen. And we have this beautiful opportunity to meet with him in his private Amen. office every single day in the Holy of Holies. If we're not in big enough hurry to stay upon our knees. Amen. Stay upon our knees. But let patience have her perfect work. Her perfect work. That ye may be perfect and entire, doing what? Wanting nothing. What do you think about that, wanting nothing? Have you ever been where you were wanting nothing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lacking nothing. Where is the focus? How is your faith, brothers and sisters? How is your faith? A complete and continuous surrender to God is what we need, brothers and sisters. It's a surrender of self. To the will of God. This isn't something that happens in a moment. Like, well, 1974, I gave my heart to Jesus Christ. I had a wonderful moment with God. He spoke to my heart. And then, I'm just good the rest of my life. 
This is how most of Christendom views Christianity. That's how they see it. But I believe this church was raised up for a different concept. A better understanding of your walk with God. Right? You know, you got a lot of people saying, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. Jesus wants to come. Jesus wants to come. But he can't come until he has a people that are prepared and ready to receive him. Amen. And I think, I believe in my heart of hearts, that that's what this church was raised up for. Amen. Amen. And what I saw last night is it filling its commission. I think it was beautiful. And I hope you guys continue to pray for these meetings. And God continues to bless. And let us not be worried about things. Put it in God's hands. Cash all your chips in on Jesus. Okay? And let us love one another. Okay? We're going to run into problems. There's going to be issues. Let's view them as challenges. And keep continuing to move forward. Amen. You know, because this whole chain, this whole church family, is only as strong as its weakest link. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, we don't just put our weak in the behind so that they can get eaten up. Mm -hmm. We put them in the front. Okay? So if we put the weak in the front and the frail in the front, that means we're going to move slower. But we're going to be together. Right? Any good marcher knows you put your fastest horses in the back. Otherwise you lose track. I'm not trying to be a poet. That just happened. <laughs> if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally. What does liberally mean? Generous. Very much, right? <laughs> Piling it on. Yeah. And upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Hmm. But let him ask in faith, not wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Where's the focus on a double-minded man? He can't focus. Everything's blurry because he's wanting to see this and this at the same time. You ladies are very good at doing multiple things at one time. We had this discussion last night. Men aren't wired that way. Men are wide, wired in a single focus. I think, and I'm not trying to be sexist here, that men can focus better in that respect. We're, we're wired differently. God's given us different gifts. Um, I'm going to continue to walk out on this limb before I fall down and that land on my face. You know, you, you got chefs and whatever they're generally the best of them are men and I'm not saying that to be sexist I'm saying that because when, when, when a man puts his mind to something and he's settled on it he's going to do well and I'm not saying women don't either because women can do multiple things at one time which men don't but where's the focus where is our focus as a church what is our heart beat what is our heart? You know, our will is the only and the greatest thing that we can give to God. Amen. Our will. Our will, period. Where is your will? What is your will? Let's turn to Romans chapter 7. Know ye 
not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. How that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. So then if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from the law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Hmm. What do you reckon they're talking about? Is this something personal in the heart? Are we not the bride of Christ, male or female? The whole church is the bride of Christ. So where is your heart? What is the nature of your heart? It's twisted up, right? It's married to what? Sin, right? But, if the flesh is dead, mm -hmm. you're free. You hear it? Mm -hmm. And you can be married to Christ. Mm -hmm. But, if we want to play in this willy-nilly <laughs> land of back and forth, Right? This Laodicea and lukewarmness, then we live as adulterers. No. I mean, I'm just trying to speak what the Bible's saying. So. I'm not hearing any amen. But I think there's something here to realize that if death to this nature, really happens, and this is what we desire, is to be married to Christ, we're free. We are free. Free, brothers and sisters. What are you after? Aren't you after peace? Where do you think peace comes from? It comes from Jesus Christ. Him and Him alone. Let's go back to Romans 6. Romans 6 and 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Amen. Jesus came to take care of the condition of sin. Okay? The noun. If we, if we are in Christ and we follow Him, the verb, sin, goes away. Amen. That's not a problem anymore. You see? The real meat of the problem is the root. And the root is what? We talked about it. It's this flesh. It's the old man, as the Bible calls it. And as long as we're living with this old man, we can't be married to Christ. In the illustration, the wife leaves her family and her name to be bound, I said bound, so that I didn't have to say surrender, because some people have a problem with the word surrender. To her husband, and the two become one. One. That's what Jesus wants. This oneness. He wants this oneness for us individually, and he wants this oneness for us corporately. And we can have this if our focus 
is not other people or our problems or anything else that might come up in a day. But Christ first and foremost. Amen. And when we don't feel like it, and when we do feel like it, we stay on our knees. You know, Martin Luther, I know, I know I've told you guys this, he used to stay on his knees for three hours a day. Three hours. He wanted to know that he knew that Jesus Christ was his, that the Holy Spirit was leading and guiding him. He said if he didn't spend three hours a day on his knees, he could not get anything done. Amen. Where was that focus? That was the right focus. I don't have that kind of determination. I want to be there. There was a time I was there. I'm not at that place. I want to be again. Let us turn to uh, James again. If you would. James is a power-packed book. Small book, but powerful, huh? Chapter 4, we're in Roy.
annoyances vanishes. They vanish. When it becomes the habit of the soul to converse with God, the power of the evil one is broken. Broken, brothers and sisters. Finished. I'm going to continue on here. Verse 9. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Do you hear the flip over here? There's something happening here. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and He shall lift you up. Mm -hmm. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother, and judgest his brother, speak evil of the law, and judgest the law. But if thou judgest the law, then thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who are thou that judgest another? <laughs> go to now ye that say, Today or tomorrow when we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain, whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanish away. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or do that. But now ye rejoice in your boastings, all such rejoicing is evil. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. How is your walk, brothers and sisters? How is your walk? I want you to turn to Hebrews. Hebrews 8. <clears throat> now of the things, Hebrews 8 and 1, now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and not man. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifice where it is necessary that man have somewhat also to offer. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who set, serve under, unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the temple, the tabernacle. For see, saith he, thou that make it all things according to the pattern shown thee in the mount. Verse 6, but now hath obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of the better covenant, which was established upon better promises. Amen. Brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. Jesus mm -hmm. is the way, the truth, and the life. I've run out of time, but I want to say there's only three kinds of people in the world. Three kinds, okay? There are those that are walking into the desert. There are those that are in the desert. And they're those that are coming out of the desert. Where are you? How is your walk? What is your focus? Maybe God wants you to be in the desert. Maybe you're supposed to be in the desert. That doesn't mean it's a bad thing. You know? Jesus said that the Spirit led him into the desert, doesn't it? The Bible say, led him into the desert to be tempted of the devil. 40 days and 40 nights. Can you imagine that kind of temptation? No food? That kind of struggle? You think Jesus spent some time on his knees in that 40 days? That was an ordained thing that God had to do with Jesus. So, if you're going through some struggles and some tough times, maybe something that needs to happen. What I'm saying is, don't
Don't fight it, kicking and screaming. Instead of, why me, Lord? Why me? Why me? Let's ask a different question. What, Lord? What, Lord? And get out.